They got some plutonium hanging out with them. I mean, they're supposed to be peaceful. So I don't, I don't know if they'd be like, turn your backs, they fucking cut your tongue and eyes out. They're going to be hearing this and give us a one star rating. Oh, yep. I'm sorry, <laughs> I couldn't get through <laughs> Anna's voice for more than 10 minutes. I don't know. Reading up on them, the Mansi are said in Legends to be riding moose. Moose are dangerous. Hell yeah. They got some big balls. Are you sure those are not eyes dangling down there? Okay, oh. let's go on to the next theory. All right, the next one's what? KGB plant? Yeah. All right, the next theory is a KGB plant. There are several theories that the hike into the mountains was secretly and against the majority of the hikers' knowledge. A KGB operation. Perhaps one of the most interesting aspects of these claims is the fact that the oldest member of the group, 38-year-old Zimyan, a.k.a. Alexander Zolotaryov, was not only a last-minute addition, but also reportedly had extensive military and combat training. Why exactly was he there? Perhaps the tattoo on his body is worth paying more attention to by researchers into this most mysterious case. The tattoo read, Demuruzaza. That's a good pronunciation, Dan. I know, right? So it's Deermuza Zewa. I'm going to spell it out to you guys. D-A-E-R-M-M-U-A-Z-U-A-Y-A. But moving on. According to those who have researched the word, there is no translation in any known language. Well, I guess now I know why I can't fucking pronounce it. Many assume it to be a either a secret military tag or some kind of secret society. I wonder if Hans knows that word. Hans seems like a guy who would know this word. You think? You want me to text him? I'm going to text him it. So what does this mean to you? Oh, wait a second here. Oh, shit. Fine. Here, I got to show you. I find this. It's like, hello, everybody. I have a theory about the cedar. We know that a cedar is a tree, and we know that Simeon have a tattoo of that word, or then he spells it a different way, I guess, the real way of spelling it. If you go at Morse Code Tree, you can see that the thing is a furtive plane military, or it's like intelligence, artificial, extraterrestrial, or military plane. And someone like drew the Morse Code thing, and then I guess where they found the bodies or something like that. And it comes out to that stealth jet, which if you draw it on, I guess, the Morse Code or whatever. It does. It seems a little bit of a reach. It does, but it's just like, like that is interesting. It looks like a bird, too. Anyways. All right, so we'll move on. Many assume it to be a, either a secret military tag or some kind of secret society moniker. If there is any truth to Zolotaryov or any of the Dyatlov crew being KGB agents, what their mission might have been is still anyone's guess. <laughs> Man, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that Morse code stuff or what that word means. Yeah, neither do I. I'd, I'd have to take like a full day to dig into that word and the theories surrounding it and all that stuff. All right, so how about we go ahead and dive into some American intelligent involvement with this? Well, at least the theories on it. Ooh, I like that. Ooh. So there's some claims that the incident was a result of a CIA KGB meeting. And it was involving the handling over of radioactive materials, which ultimately resulted in the deaths of nine Soviet citizens. Now, I will say that there's no real proof for these claims. They rely heavily on the simple fact that the Cold War was in its heyday at that time. And if there was any chance at all that the United States could have been placed in a negative light, the Soviets would have taken it. However, now, there is a reason to believe there could have been a type of entrapment kind of scenario. And it was, uh, like, for example, there were considerable indications of radiation. Both of the area itself and some of the dead had that radioactive material on their clothes. Now, rumors would surface that the incident was an attempt to plant radioactive materials on CIA agents. And they were, that were uh, caught behind Soviet line. Somehow, the operation went wrong, and the hikers were killed. If this theory was true, then that would mean that at least one of the hikers was a KGB operative. I want to know, like, how much radioactivity was found on them. Like, how much? Because that would tell me quite a bit, you know? I mean, yes. it's not like you just get it on you randomly. 
the fact that it's there at all is a weird find. Well, I think I've figured it out, but we'll save that till the end. All right, so let's talk about the next theory, which was is the Gulag authorities killed them by mistake. So in addition to the potential threats from the escaped Gulag prisoners, the Gulag authorities themselves were likely to shoot first and ask questions later, particularly in the region that the hikers were at. Now, we should bear in mind that they were off course and somewhere they had not planned to be originally. So might the Gulag authorities perhaps been conducting a standard patrol of the area or maybe looking for an escaped prisoner? They might have been like a little eager for a potential apprehension and killed the hikers by error? You know, imagine the anger from the local population if this was, you know, to become known. Perhaps then a cover-up was decided upon. Note, however, that a potential hole in this theory is that the nearest gulag was reportedly about 60 miles or 100 kilometers from where the incident took place. So the patrol area would have been extremely large. While there is no proof that the gulag guards killed the hikers and covered it up, there is certainly enough murkiness around this incident for people to be suspicious. Also, it was during the Cold War era, a time when distrust, distrust, even among the a country's citizens, it ran super deep. In fact, the notion that the Cold War played a major part in the mysterious incident carries over into our next theory. So who wants to kind of transition over into that one? So this next one involves escaped prisoners. Though it is less talked about, there is a claim that the hikers were the unfortunate victims of escaped prisoners from the gulags that were in that region. Many such prisoners, who very well may have been incarcerated since World War II and wouldn't have been all up to speed with the world event, so they would have been imprisoned in these facilities. To them, the conflict would have been still very much taken place unless they had other inside knowledge. And if, if they were spotted by strangers, that could have resulted in an attack from these desperate people themselves potentially hardened from the war, of course, and untold time that they spent behind bars, with no freedom at all whatsoever, they would, you would think, weigh up the options of attacking a relatively small group against the risk of being reported to the Soviet authorities, which led to many years back in those brutal gulags. I mean, there's so many mm. theories on this one, it's just option there is my favorite is the next one which is my personal favorite that this one is the yeti claims perhaps one of the most interesting claims is that the group met their grisly end at the hands or should that be claws of a yeti slash bigfoot like creature that inhabits the remote regions of the ural mountains the local mansi tribe has legends of a yeti like creature called the Mink, and furthermore it is said to roam the area of the incident there is a famous picture recovered from the belongings of the group on Nikolai Thibault Bernal's camera. On a shot known as Frame 17, there is a strange picture that seems to show a figure that bears a resemblance to a Bigfoot-type creature. And leave it up to our cult leader, Aaron. He has provided this picture. So yeah, you click that link, and it has all the pictures that she's taken. Go down to the very last one, frame number 17. Oh, Now shit. tell me... That's not Bigfoot. Tell oh. me that's not Bigfoot. Why that's is Bigfoot. he always in the same pose? I can't, I can't, uh, can't, uh, can't deny or affirm this. <laughs> Do you think that they could have been playing a trick where they put on clothes and went out there and was like, go out there and stand like you're looking like B Bigfoot? I don't know. That's a pretty big figure, though. Yeah, and it doesn't even look like the figure has clothes on. I mean, it looks like it's, I wish this thing would pa oh, pause, there we go. It looks like it's got, I don't know, it's blurry, it's hard it's to tell. It's a typical Bigfoot thing. But, like, look yeah. at the picture before. I mean, that guy's got, it's fully covered in clothes. Yeah, he's got a hat on, but who's to say he didn't put a mask on and kind of make himself look one tone? I mean, it's black and white, so it's hard to really decipher what you're seeing but I, I certainly see a person or a being uh bigfoot whatever it may be standing there 
I just kind of feel like his arms are a bit too short. His body doesn't seem 